I was just hanging out in the shop today and I realized it's February and Valentine's Day is coming up. For our project today, we're going to turn some very small ingrain bowls out of walnut. In this video, you're going to see me turn those bowls into earrings for my sweetheart. So stay and watch. I've already turned a 3 quarter inch tenon on the end of our piece of walnut to mount it into the collet chuck and I'll use the collet chuck sometimes when I'm doing very small work. Now we're going to round an inch and a half piece of walnut and our bowl should be about inch and a quarter when we're done. End grain hollowing is a little bit different than hollowing a bowl. So I'm going to set up with my spindle gouge exactly on center so that I can push in in the center and then work my way out. The reason for this is that if you think about the grain alignment, you're actually still cutting downhill along the grain, which will make it so you don't get as many catches. While shaping the outside, I thought I could just measure the wall thickness by feel and I wouldn't have to worry about the depth. But as you'll see, I did have to worry about the depth in a minute here. So a little sanding. I decided to go just a little bit thinner on the wall thickness. With a narrow parting tool, we're going to get ready to part that off and I'll just make a series of straight cuts, just widening them out for the width of the tool and then, oops, you'll see what I did wrong, there's a hole in the middle. The good thing about wood turning is, is you can always start over, there's plenty of wood to try again on. So we're going to do our end grain hollowing and clean it up with a scraper a little bit and we'll move to the outside but I'm going to check it with a depth gauge this time. And I'll put a line on there and then I'll hold my depth away from that line a little bit so I have the bottom of the bowl taken care of. And we'll just shape that and do a little sanding on it and we'll be ready to part that one off. It's really an easy project as long as you don't make mistakes. If you're like me though, you just blaze through a project if you haven't done it in a while and you have to make those mistakes so you can learn. Okay, so we'll part this off now. And look, we have a bowl this time. On the next one, I hope this is a better angle so that you can see that end grain hollowing just a little bit better. So you just push in and then tilt a little bit and work your way out. Then clean it up with a scraper there. And again, the depth gauge. And you'll see my mistake in a minute. I actually cut right on the line. So I cut on the bottom. And I didn't realize that until I parted the bowl off. Okay, after a little sanding, we're ready to part that one off. You'll see if you don't leave a little bit of space, we've got another one with a hole in it. Really that's okay because there's still some wood left. So we're going to set up and do it again. Haul that out, clean it up a little bit. And this time we'll mark the depth with the line and cut beyond that a little bit for the bottom of the bowl. Shape that and get a uniform wall thickness. Do a little bit of sanding and then that one's ready to part off. And there we go, earring number two. Over to the drill press. I found it helps if you have a hole or a cavity that holds the bowl while you drill. And you want to drill that hole close to the edge but not too close. And here's where I decided to fix my mistake. And since I had a pair with holes in it, we're going to have another pair of earrings. Okay, and I figure with walnut, it's good to finish it up with walnut oil. And I'm really only going to put one coat on. I think that's all I'll need. And just slather those up with walnut oil. Now it's been a while since I've done any jewelry, so this was a learning process. So what I did was I fitted a jump ring in that hole, and 
got it tight. And then I realized that I didn't have the earring hook on the jump ring, so I had to take it apart again and put the earring hook on there. And then when I got it all ready to hang, I realized that it wouldn't hang facing forward, so I decided to put one more jump ring in between so that it would hang facing forward. So I took it all apart many times, put it back together. But I think it worked out nicely in the end. Well, that project was frustrating and fun all at the same time. I think I got it turned around and it turned out pretty well. I'm sure my sweetie will be happy. I want to say I really appreciate all the kind words and comments you've left for me. It really makes me feel good. So keep it up, I like that. If you want to see more wood training videos, consider subscribing to my channel. Go out and have a fantastic day. We'll see you soon.